So, honestly, I feel like every time I see him, he plays games with me. He plays like, and it's not only with me. He's playing like this big, massive game and playing with um, my emotions, but not only my emotions, other people's emotions too. And it's a way of like getting lessons. It's a way of like, uh, it's kind of a way of bringing me into my own. Like I can see it from above. I can see that I'm getting lessons in it and that I'm, that I'm slowly like coming into my own. But at the same time, I honestly, I feel manipulated and used. Like even if I know that in the end, you know, I'm coming into my higher self and I'm having all of these lessons that I'm learning and I can, I can be appreciative of that. I still feel like I'm manipulated and used and like not special. Like yesterday when we were at the Rob Roy, now I can see afterwards, it's always afterwards that I see the whole, um, game of it like he he led me on and he led me like i'm embarrassed to say but he got that that uh chasing energy going again and he led me on a wild goose chase and i have a feeling that he like led me out to to like the parking lot and then he went back i really honestly have that feeling and that it was like to get me running or or some kind of test or something but it's really manipulative it's using my own emotions against me or the or the feelings that I have towards him against me. Just a minute. My son came in the room, so I went into my bedroom. I just feel so like stupid. Stupid is one and used and manipulated and and I can see what he's doing like he gets I can see what he's doing with these other women too he like gets them hooked on him because he's attractive and he has charisma he gets them hooked on him and then he starts stirring the pot like getting them chasing and running and 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 hurting and okay so i see that it is a spiritual awakening and that through this you like come into your own but it's so shitty i feel so hurt and so like unspecial and used and manipulated and stupid <laughs> I'm just hurt and like unimportant to him. And I know that that's just, you know, that I should be important to myself and blah, 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 blah. But, but the shock of it, like, it, like understanding when you're manipulated and then you understand it and you see it. It makes me feel like I'm stupid or like, why do I feel these emotions towards him? I can see what he's doing. Why? Why do I still feel this way? Why do I still fall into his fucking traps over and over and over? Last Saturday, it was also a freaking trap that I fell into. And every time, every time I see him, it's like, I care about him. And he uses that against me. 
I'm hurt and I'm upset. And I know what I know what the lesson was. The lesson was not to run after him because if he's leaving, I went running just like it, just like I always do. I went running, and the lesson is that don't go running, and then you get the honey pot, right? At least I went home. At least that's where I went. So I'm still <clears throat> in the realization of this all. And I think that a lot of what I feel is like tricked. I feel like I'm being tricked all the time. And on the one side, I'm like mad. I feel like I'm being toyed with, like being, and I'm like, I'm mad at him, but there's nothing to be, well, he's playing tricks on me, like mind games, and not only on me, and I'm mad at myself for falling into the tricks. And then I and then I feel like towards myself I feel like that I'm acting out of love. And then I feel kind of like used. Like he's taking my emotions towards him and twisting them around. And like using myself against me. And then I was sitting here. You know, at first I was like, when I realized what had happened, right? Because I always realize after. When I realized what had happened and how I fell right back into his trap again. Led around by the freaking nose. And I keep on saying, okay, you're just going to have to get over it. You're going to have to get over him. You're going to have to live your life without any kind of relevance to him. And I don't even know what that looks like. I just need to get over this. I feel like what it feels like to be desperate. And I've never been a desperate person. I've never felt like... I've always had, like, meaning in my life. I've always felt like my life was meaningful, and I still do. I feel like this is just another level. Like every time I get to uh, a level, this is like helping me let go. Like there's nothing to hold on to. There's nothing to hold on to. Every time I try to freaking hold on to something, I get further and further in the realization that there's nothing to hold on to. Yeah, you know, this game. Yeah, you know, as long as I'm playing his freaking game, which is being stuck on him, as long as I'm stuck on him, I'm playing his freaking game by his freaking rules. To let go.
It's the freaking emotions. They're so intense. And then I get mad at myself for having the emotions. Why am I freaking stuck on him? Why? Why can't I just get over this? He's playing games with me and I'm falling into the freaking trap. And I know that this is a spiritual awakening and I know all of that, but it hurts so bad. And I know he's toying with me. That was a really assholey thing to do. I need to take his word for it, that he doesn't want me around. He doesn't want me around. And if he doesn't want me around, then he's going to continue to play those games with me to make me feel crappy next to him. I need to just get over him. Every time I feel like I'm doing better, like yesterday, I was feeling so much better. And then he comes right back in. And I allow it. It's like a moth to fire or something. Maybe I need to quit talking about it. Just quit talking about it. Just go through the emotions internally and quit talking about it. Quit giving it power. I don't even know anymore. I don't even know. Okay, so another continuation of this. I still haven't found my recording stick. So. I uh, feel like if I can get past the all the time looking at what he did, why he did this, why he trying to catch him. I have a real opportunity here. I have a real opportunity to come into my full power, into full enlightenment, into my higher self. This uh, whole twin flame journey, I don't, it doesn't matter what you call it. You can call it whatever, spiritual enlightenment, spiritual journey, uh, spiritual rising whatever you want to call it, 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 he only plays a part in it. He plays the part that initiates it, that gets me going, that gets me like, uh, um, because every meeting with him, I get, I feel like I'm in the last leg of this journey. Like I'm really, the things that I'm working on now, the things that the self-love, and the letting go of attachment that's those are the big things and the and the big demons like uh, my my monetary situation like learning how to trust in in providence and learning how to trust in god and learning who i am all of these things are the big demons these are the big dragons i've gotten to and i feel like if i can um like something I'm going through this morning is that if I can release him, I can release anything, any kind of attachment. And that is pure enlightenment because the attachment is in this 3D world. It's in this, uh, in this physical body. We get attached on people, get attached on things, get attached to ideas. And if I'm able to release him, because I was thinking, I was sitting here doing dishes and I was thinking... I didn't finish the dishes because I'm thinking <laughs> and I wanted to record this so that I can like get all my thoughts together. And I was thinking that like, I've never gotten this attached to somebody. You know, if somebody ever told me, Hey, I don't, you know, I, I, I need space from you. I would have been like, 
<laughs> goodbye. It would have been, and it would have been like that because something in my mind would have, would have, would have shifted. Like, okay, there's, there's, you know, there's. If it's not a two-way road, then it's not. Uh, then there's not. It's not a fit. And I would have been able in my mind to get over it really quick, too. But with this thing, it's like it, it won't leave. And I understand it because I've never felt like this before about anybody. I mean, it's like meeting somebody that is of your same essence. That's why it seems so surreal to me. And it seems so surreal to me also that he's able to just let it go like that. Like, okay, you can go. I don't even want to see you. And that's part of the disbelief in this whole thing. And then I have the whole Messiah thing going on, right? And that he's the Messiah and I can see it. I can see how it plays out. I know it sounds crazy, but I see, I see not only my work being done, up against him, but other people all around him, whenever people meet him, they get flung into a spiritual, uh, you know, from wherever they are, right? From whatever level they are at, they get flung up a level. Some of the people that he meets, there's the, there's like, they're so far in their ego mind that they can't even, can, he like, he has to come all the way down to this level, but they can't even get up to that level to meet him and get that, uh, shock into the spiritual awakening but somehow I magnetized him into my life and somehow that must mean that he she needs to be in my life at some in some way because I keep on going back and forth I wish I never met him I wish I never met him like those are thoughts that come up because of the pain right but those are the ego that's the ego because the truth of it is is that it's the best thing that ever happened to me I have a real opportunity here if I can get unstuck and unlooping and the thing is is that I keep on getting unstuck and then I get stuck again I get unstuck and then I get stuck again like I keep on having the realizations like I'm having now like okay you see in my videos like I have these videos that keep on going back and forth I'm in my high empowerment place and then all these wonderful things are coming out and then I have these these And I realized uh, when I was sitting here doing dishes, I was thinking, wow, I have a real opportunity here because I could feel I can get, I'm getting glimpses of it. I'm getting glimpses of this heaven on earth. This heaven on earth is not attachment. It's, it's, I, I did that video yesterday where I was talking about, um, I think it's called, I don't remember, but it also, in there is uh, sex is sacred. That's part of the title. So if you want to look up the video. But I was talking about how the soul is above the archetypes and above the ego and that it is not attached to anything. It's just pure consciousness. It's a pure uh, experience. And, and when you get to the soul level, then, then there is no pain because you're not attached to anything. It's the ego that is attaching. It's the ego that is trying to make sense of things and put thoughts on things and put meaning on things. So if, if he's playing all these maneuver games and I fall into the trap and then I feel sorry for myself and then I feel like I'm used and I feel all those things, those are the meanings that I'm putting on of it. Instead of just being like, okay, this is what happened and I'm going through the motions and whatever happened was for the higher good. And I know this because here I am getting the lessons, understanding it. So it has to be for the higher good. But it still hurts like crap. Um, watching my words. But there, you know, there's a certain amount of things that in order to get the message across, you have to just say them and blurt them as they come out and slowly cleanse myself as I am purifying, being purified. And so I really feel like, I feel on the one, one hand, the shock wore off and I'm so happy and look how fast it happens because those other videos that I did that I'm putting this one on the end of was less than an hour ago. So like I'm learning to go through the lessons like that. Many of the lessons, many of the lessons, 
I'm getting while they're happening. But this, I think I felt stupid because I fell into his trap and I didn't realize that I was even in the trap until a day later. And I just completely fell into his shenanigans. I fell into his shenanigans. And then you feel like I felt used and because I know that, that it's, and you know what? Pure love is allowing him to use me to make a, to make a higher, for a higher purpose, right? So let's say the, this is him coming into his power and learning all of the tools of his uh, Messiah act, yeah? That's what I'm talking about, his Messiah act. And uh, Messiah act, it's not an act, but, but if, if he is learning his tools and I can be a part of that, and, and in the bigger picture, like the life picture, if I'm looking at, you know, what's more important in life, if I could be a part of that and take part in that, even if it is at my own expense, I feel like I'm a sacrifice in this whole freaking thing, this freak show. I'm telling you, he's, he's making a freak show. There's a freak show going on. And I'm right in the middle of the freaking freak show. I'm the freak. But he is too. But I feel like almost like I'm a sacrifice, like I'm sacrificing myself for a higher good. I felt uh, this isn't the first time that I'm that I'm feeling this. It might be the first time that I'm videoing it because I remember in the beginning and when I first got on the, the twin flame journey was when I felt the most like a sacrifice. But I think that even uh, making these videos is sacrificial. It's it's me speaking all this weakness and all of this um, you know all of the you know and, and I'm saying weakness because it can be perceived as weakness I don't really perceive it as weakness I perceive it more as strength because I'm putting myself out there I'm talking about all of this and I'm not the only one now with the energies that are in the air um, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm just, because I've been doing it, I'm making coffee and toast <laughs> with some bread that's already like a week old. So here in Israel, there's a, that you get bread mostly from the bakery. And a lot of times, most of the time, it doesn't, unless you get it like from the shelf, it's usually, it, but, but most of the bread here is better bread than in the States, uh, in my opinion. Um, I mean the just the regular regular bread because it is without preservatives, so its shelf life is shorter, but it's more healthy. It's healthier, and and more natural. So I'm kind of looking at this now after the initial shock, yeah, and I still have the pain, right? Because I guess pain is attachment. Pain is attachment. I'm, I'm, I'm walking myself through this. Pain, if you're in pain, it means that you are going against what is happening. Because if you if you were just going with what was happening, then, the, then it would be an easy flow. But I guess that that is going against what is happening is also kind of maneuvering yourself into where you want to be. Because if you just go with everything, go with the flow constantly and consistently, then you just... You, you can't have any control of where your life goes. So I guess the pain is telling me, okay, I'm not in a place that I want to be. I need to shift or alter or do something, especially because I know that I am responsible for my own reality. I am the only one that is responsible for it. Even if I'm being played, it's because I'm allowing myself to be played. Oh, I'm out of milk. Lovely. So I'm taking this as an opportunity that I have a real opportunity here. If I can quit looping in these, uh, you know, in the what did he do, the, the victim mode and just say, okay, this is what happened. I understand it. Uh, regardless of what he's doing or, or if he's a 
butthole or whatever, regardless of all that, I have an opportunity here to shed something. I have an opportunity. If, I, if the pain is in me, it's my pain. So I have the opportunity here to really dig deep and figure this out and take it and do something else with it. So that is, I'm taking this as a place to do my own, uh, my own work. So to end all this on a higher note, so self work, self work. I still have some self work, but I see, I feel like I'm in the last leg. Like I'm already getting glimpses of this place where I'm sitting in my soul seat, where I'm sitting at the, where I'm sitting on the throne, where I'm sitting in my full power and can't be taken for a ride. You know, there's only so many times you can be taken for a ride before you see that, okay, wait a minute, this car pulled up, it's gonna try to take me for a ride. So, <laughs> freaking freak show, that's, anyway, I, I am loving myself really this morning and and for the last few mornings i've been well the last i don't know how long i've gotten up and gotten into the mirror and look at myself and tell myself that i love me um i saw that um i used to listen to affirmations by louis louise hay and i listened she has lovely affirmations and when I first started on my spiritual rising, when I first went through my, um, uh, the, the rehab from alcohol, I started listening to her every day. I would just lay down and listen to her because it gave me such like peace and her voice. And she's like an old, like her voice is like a, like your grandma telling you, everything's okay, you're gonna be fine. And everything that she said is just so sweet. It's almost like sweet that you want to gag on it, but it's so sweet that you're almost embarrassed that you're listening to it, but it really does calm you, your soul inwards and, and really does like teach you what you're worth. So that I, oh, I, uh, I really do um, recommend. And I think I'm going to do some of my own affirmations and I'm going to also make an affirmation uh, recording that is my own and I'll share it with you. And then I can also uh, show myself because sometimes I go back to videos that I did when I'm talking about a certain subject and I'm like, oh yeah. And then I remind myself of points that I need in the present. So like a present to myself. So, okay, well, thank you for watching.